Earlier in the year, the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency warned all with buildings close to the banks of rivers and residents of low plains across the country to vacate such areas as prediction of flood across those areas was going to take effect. The floods have affected 27 of Nigeria's 36 states and the capital city, affecting millions of people and about 100,000 people displaced with thousands of hectares of farmland affected. The impact of the flooding in communities across Nigeria is our focus on this edition of Special Report. You're welcome to the program. I'm Olumide Mukoli. Nigeria, a country with a population of around 200 million people, seems to be battling its worst flooding in a decade. This natural disaster has led to the death of hundreds of people across the country in the last three months. Admissively, government officials have said that the situation is beyond our control. The following states uh, will be having between August to October above normal rainfall. And these states are Sokoto, KB, Zamfara, Kastina, Kano, Jigawa, Pauchi, Yobe, most parts of Gombe, and Borno states. And last but not the least, the northern fringes of Adamawa states. As they issue warnings to residents and governments of the frontline states to move away, communities at risk of inundation, identify safe higher ground for evacuation of persons, and preposition adequate stockpiles of food and not food items. The Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, or NEMA, predicts more floods in 2022 than last year, giving reasons to be excessive rainfall and contributions from external flows, such as the dam in Cameroon. All the Nigerian socioeconomic sectors are weather sensitive, whether agriculture, water resources, uh, health, construction, transportation, all the three forms of transportation, and, and uh, etc. So uh, this requires uh, uh, effective coordination coupled with the high deforestation activities, falling down of trees. So we have most of the river channels being silted up, and this affects their own size. And uh, whenever there is inflow of uh, water runoff, so they tend to overflow easily. Uh, because the original debt has been affected. So uh, the missile link RIS TV here is the response by, by citizens and we also encourage that uh, state government should uh, please liaise and align their activities uh, with, with, with our advisories. Immediately NIMED releases their re uh, report, we send the risk mapping to states, identifying risk areas, areas that will be hit by disaster. So these states have all this information. With all this information, we believe states are to develop mitigation strategy. NEMA can be anywhere all the time, but the state can start and NEMA can follow up. According to Nigeria's National Emergency Management Agency, the floods have affected at least 27 of Nigeria's 36 states and the capital city, and has affected half a million people and displaced over 500,000 persons. Communities in Maiduguri and Jere local government areas have seen their houses flooded by the heavy waters, leading to displacement of many residents. The coordinator, Disaster Management of the Nigerian Red Cross Bornu State, Babagana Isa, explains that the rising number of deaths majorly amongst youth and children has forced the Red Cross to deploy its personnel to flood-prone areas to avert impending disaster. We have deployed our men to various locations where children and other adolescents are playing on the river. So that's why you see our people, we are sensitizing the host communities there and we are also uh, stopping the children from playing in the river. Ogidi community in the Demiri North local government area of Anambra state 
amongst nine other communities is the most ravaged by the flood that is channeled to occupy a massive land space turning into an artificial lake along the Nugu Nicha Old Road. From what I observe when we are coming, the place we passed there is flooded and they say the water is still coming. So if the water is still coming at that level, it then means the people around here are not safe. So we have advised them to move to upland. Good uh, uh, there is a place, a school set aside for IDPs. Some of them have started relocating there. So we want to push all of them to that place. There's another place they call Copper's uh, Lodge. They have started moving people there. So we're not going to rest until we make sure that all the people are evacuated and settled in those uh, um, IDP place. However, there is some relief as government started the silting work on the flooded area. The governor, Professor Chukuma Saludo, flags off the exercise to put a stop to the menace that has troubled the Ogede people and commuters. We believe that in the next few weeks, um, this problem will be over and the people will no longer get drowned here. And the flooding into people's homes and uh, villages, displacing uh, our people and causing untold hardship on commuters on this particular federal road will be history. Uh, we'll continue to partner with the federal government, but um, while we call on them to do the needful. Also in Anambra State, 76 persons lost their lives while three others were declared missing when a boat carrying 85 passengers capsized. The zonal coordinator of the National Emergency Management Agency Southeast, Mr. Thikman Tanimu, explains that 85 persons had boarded a boat in an attempt to escape owing to the rising water levels. We are pre-positioning um, our stockpile of relief material for easy uh, you know, assessment and um, intervention. And um, you know, a few weeks ago, we have conducted a joint assessment, SEMA and uh, you know, NEMA, um, sensitizing the frontline communities on what they need to do harvesting their crops that are likely to be affected, you know, moving to higher ground. These are all measures we have put in place. We have also identified some of um, uh, probable IDP camps where the evacuees will be, you know, um, positioned in case of uh, evacuation. So these are some of the measures we are putting in place. However, as part of efforts in enhancing rapid response to emergencies occurring from building collapses and flood disasters across the nation, the National Emergency Management Agency is inducting specialized rescue operation equipment. The equipment includes mobile emergency intensive care unit ambulances, response vehicles, water purifier trucks, motorized boats and inflatable boats, amongst others. To the glory of God, the operational vehicle as well as specialized search and rescue equipment to be inducted into operations today include the following. Three mobile intensive care unit ambulances, MICUs. Three incident response vehicle, IRVs. Two motorized boats. Two inflatable boats. Nine floodlights. Fifteen probe cameras. Three live locators. Fifteen breaching systems. As we are all aware, disaster has <laughs> many communities and this equipment has not been kept here we have to deploy them to communities outside the first disaster that hitting people now first is what water to go in nearby bielsa state in efforts by government to alleviate the impact of the flood the state government directed that all primary and secondary schools should immediately proceed on a six-week flood break boats medium and long-term solutions that will mitigate the occurrence of flooding in our communities. I want to say that we've done some few things in the past, that is the Prosperity Administration. Some communities were provided with flood protecting barriers and even in Yenegua, like a place like Okutukutu, something was done last year 
these schemes are considered to be pilot schemes. And so our environmentalists, our engineers will go around these places to also take a very proper look and see how effective what was done in the year 2020 is effective. And if we conclude that the measures put in place in 2020 is effective and the communities are safe, the people living within the neighborhoods are not affected by this flood, then that same approach will be used, will be replicated in other areas. Apart from directing the closure of all primary and secondary schools, state government also constituted a task force to aid in recognizing high ground that persons affected by the floods can relocate to, while all closed water channels in the state to, while all closed water canals in the state are being opened up to reduce the impact of the flood. The members of the task force, as I earlier mentioned, is the Commissioner of Environment, the Commissioner of Works and Infrastructure, Commissioner of, for Health, the Commissioner of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, the State Trade Senatorial Commissioners, and the State Emergency Management Agency. The owners of the tax force is to urgently identify, inspect, identify, and quickly provide solutions to those ravaged areas by the flood, and also to ensure high grants are provided by the state government to salvage victims of this flood. Engene Kingdom in Ahua, the West Local Government of River State, is an agrarian community which has existed beside the Orashi River for years. The clan head, Okwa Isaac, takes a trip down memory lane on how the river was deeper when he was a boy, now shallow, and has been a scene of flooding since 2012. Uh, the flood is high, always high, right from 2012 till now. My people, any time the flood, any of the flood periods from uh, August down to November, the flood will submerge every community. We are homeless. We are homeless. Our food items, banana, plantain, uh, cassava, yams, everything is gone. You go today, you want to go and affect, it's three, uh, maybe three, three feet or two feet. By the time you go tomorrow, it's above uh, maybe two, three meters to four meters high. And there is no way we can collect, harvest the crops again. Uh, the Orashi River, our river, the Orashi River, the level of the Orashi River is not deep again. When I was small, the Orashi River was about, the height, the depth of Orashi River was about 20 to 20 to 25 meters deep. But right now, six feet, some areas, some areas, four feet, people can trek, move across the Orashi River. So the river now is too shallow to contain the volume of water. Uh, when once the river full, the, the, this in the water now overflows to the community and our farms. Then our canals, we have the Edua Creek from John Karama number one, connects, that Edua Creek connects down to uh, Bayesa, where the, it terminates at uh, River Niger. That canal too is not deep again. So to dredge those canals and the river, if the river is deep, the water level cannot uh, enter the communities and our farms to destroy the farms. 
A drive through the different clans within the kingdom shows the extent of the devastation. Homes are submerged while the natives resort to the use of canoes as they struggle to salvage what they can of their crops before the floods totally destroys them. As it is, our crops has been ravaged by this water you see. And uh, the most unfortunate thing is that uh, uh, we have not received any government intervention up to date. This road you are seeing is an access route to the facility of Nigerian Ajib Oil Company and of course SPDC. But as it is, nothing has been done. Rather, they are conveying their workers to their, to their fields, neglecting the people. And so I'm appealing to the government of River State and of course the federal government, the multinationals, to please intervene so that, as it is, we have about four, four clans in this kingdom. There is need for them to build uh, a permanent IDP camp in get the kingdom so that when there is this uh, perennial flooding, the people can have a place to go. Other social amenities such as road infrastructure are affected by the flooding. No visible efforts have been made by the government to ameliorate his people's suffering. We know it's a natural disaster, but there, accounts, there can be some uh, measures that will be done to uh, cushion the effects of the flooding, uh, the dredging of the Engene River, which is, some call it Orashi River. And um, I think as Engene people too, we, we, we have to look at our farming pattern and season. I think it's something the Engene Kingdom we have to look at so that we look at how and season we farm so that we don't the flooding won't be affecting our crops. Because yes, it's natural that because of the terrain, the topography where we are, we we'll always once in a while experience this flood. This is Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. Over hundreds of houses, schools, worship centers and farmland are all submerged. Thousands of residents are now homeless as ravaging floods from River Niger continues to overflow its banks. <laughs> Those living at the low land and river banks are mostly affected. The Ganaja Road, which leads to the eastern part of the country, has been submerged, making it difficult for vehicular movement. Canoe is now the means of transportation for the residents living around the area. The governor of Kogi State, Yaya Bello, paid a visit to the affected communities. He said about 10 communities in the state are presently underwater. This year is even worse than 2012 and 2018 put together. We are aware of this uh, natural disaster. That is why we decided under my administration to embark on construction of over four kilometers embankments to ward off and prevent this flood. You can see that despite the embankment flood still came, but thank God the embankment has been able to assist in, uh, in its way. I sympathize with all of you. Um, we are taking steps and measures to ensure that we go on on a more permanent solution. I have earlier released a statement where we shall uh, go ahead to clear some houses that are blocking waterways, there are some houses that are on the, um, the water, uh, waterways where we shall make efforts to ensure that we relocate all the inhabitants to a more suitable place. From the riverine areas, he moves straight to the IDP center where he promises the people relief materials, insurance policy, amongst others. We will bring all the necessary succor, palliative assistance to all of you. In terms of food items, and when water recedes, we will ensure that those that need to be relocated from where they are, 
to a new site on a more permanent place basis, we are going to do that. I call on all of you to please remain peaceful and calm. And I thank the local, the local government chairman for providing the necessary security for all of you here. Please live in peace and harmony. This is not your permanent home. Water will go. You will just retrieve whatever you can retrieve. We will relocate you to a new permanent place. I'm using this opportunity to call on all of you. We have a program called Bello Care and Health Insurance Scheme. Chairman, make sure that all those that are in various IDPs are captured under this Bello Care and Health Insurance Scheme free of charge. And there are other systems and programs that we have designed. We will make sure that those of you that are affected immediately are captured and you benefit. Their communities. For residents of Uyo, the Akwaibom state capital, the rainy season is often accompanied by anxiety with lives and livelihood threatened as landlords and tenants are forced to leave their homes due to the perennial flooding. The Kwaibom State Governor is now looking away on the issue of flooding in the state capital. The state governor recently provided what he called a lasting solution to years of flooding in Uyo, the state capital. I'm sure you've listened to how we've narrated this project. A project that has affected 18 communities. The biggest ever flood control project by any state government in Nigeria. Every problem here has been solved. Today, you're going to see what seems as the seven wonders in our seven year of administration. And we are coming down here now. We want to appreciate the youths of this community who cooperated with this project. They did not disrupt us but at the same time, at the same time, I provided work for over 500 of them. Over 500. Boronu State in the northeastern part of Nigeria geographically has two major vegetation zones. The Sahel in the north, with severe desert encroachments covering most of the Chad Basin areas, and Sudan Savannah in the south, with scrubby vegetation with tall tree woodlands. The Boronu State environs is on the verge of an emergency humanitarian crisis arising from flooding which has affected houses, roads and other infrastructure in major communities across the state. So we are already in a uh, crisis needing a uh, humanitarian, humanitarian crisis and also if this issue will be neglected or handle, handled carelessly we are still going into another new phase of humanitarian crisis. Communities such as Maduganari, Gwanje, Dala, Ngomari, Tusuma, Zabamari, Adamari in Meiduguri and Jere local government areas have seen their homes, farmland and roads ravaged by floods, leaving many residents displaced and with property worth millions of Nara destroyed. The government is set, completely set, to address the issue of lack of drainage and also the maintenance of the drainages that have been constructed but that have been blocked due to um, garbages that fill these uh, drainages. Um, some of them, like this year, they had been really heavy rain almost across the state. And so, um, I wouldn't call it incidental, but this year the rains have been particularly heavy. And so the water levels in even our rivers have risen. You know, these are things you, you can, they are, they are already moving around the natural course. Uh, but so what we are doing is all, all the roads we are doing, we construct them and link them to drainages, to outfalls, that is like rivers or ponds that the waters drain into, away from. Uh, the communities.
Over the years, Yola, the Adamo State Capital, has experienced flooding, especially any time water from the Lagdo Dam in the Republic of Cameroon is released. However, this flood is caused by the heavy rainfall that started in the last few months. The flood submerged foodstuff and houses worth millions of naira while destroying several businesses and other valuables. With floods sweeping through these states, the federal and state governments are expected to bring up plans and action and find lasting solutions to persistent flooding threatening the lives of residents. That's our package for today. Hope you enjoyed every bit of it. Bye for now.